Good evening and welcome to our special on the 2022 Shaw Prize. The measurement of the distance and motions of the stars is one of the most central fields in astronomy. We've been charting the stars from Earth with optical telescopes for centuries. But two revolutionary space missions changed everything. The Hipparchos and Gaia space telescopes gave scientists a massive trove of observational data unprecedented in size and accuracy. Michael Perriman and Leonard Lindegren share the 2022 Shaw Prize in Astronomy for their key contributions to these two missions. The Lund Observatory, Sweden. Professor Leonard Lindegren has a nostalgic moment with one of the telescopes on campus. The astronomer has observed the stars for over 40 years, starting at Lund University, where he earned his PhD in 1980. When I started to study astronomy, it was still in the old observatory in Lund. And there in a room next to the uh, lecture hall was an old brass instrument that fascinated me from the very first time I saw it. Uh, when it was explained to me how it worked, I realized that uh, although it had not been used for a very long time, it was very ingeniously designed to do very accurate measurements and every detail of the instrument was carefully thought out to maximize the accuracy that you can reach. And that made me very fascinated of this uh, particular field of astronomy. The field of astrometry provides the fundamental data that supports nearly every aspect of astronomy and astrophysics. The stars have been sending out their spheres since the Big Bang. In the second century BC, Greek astronomer Hipparchus mapped a thousand stars and charted them in the sky. Astrometry tells us a lot about the position, velocity, and how far away the stars are from Earth. Its scientists strive for great accuracy. I had studied uh, mathematics and physics at the university here in Lund, uh, and uh, there was the possibility to take an optional course in astronomy as part of the physics education. And I chose to do that, and uh, it really got me interested. I had been interested in astronomy for, for many years as an amateur, but I had not really thought until then that it might be possible to make a career of it. The Hipparco Space Telescope launched in 1989 by the European Space Agency. Astrometry had hit a brick wall in terms of accuracy, with telescopes stuck here on Earth under the precious but distorting effects of our atmosphere. Hipparchos was to orbit the Earth to take measurements of the stars in the Milky Way using a time-tested method, parallax. We have the sun, we have the Earth orbit around the sun, and if you look at the distant star from two points in the orbit, six months apart in time, then you will see the star in two different, slightly different directions. Of course, this angle here is much smaller in reality, but that is uh, twice the parallax, and the parallax is usually denoted by this Greek letter, pi. And once we have determined the parallax, we can easily get the distance to the star, which is simply one over this parallax. And if this is expressed in arc seconds, we get the distance in parsecs. You need to know the distances to whatever you are observing, whether it is stars or galaxies or quasars. And uh, the parallaxes provide the first step in the distance ladder in the universe. It can give us very precise distances to the nearest stars, and then this information can be used to build 
a ladder of distances further and further out in the universe, even to the most distant objects. Lindegren was a member of the Hipparchos science team for the duration of the mission, from 1976 to 1997. He developed many of the approaches and algorithms related to the mission, the optical and focal plane design, instrument calibration, dynamic smoothing, double star analysis, and the extra galactic reference frame, to name but a few. He also led one of the two ESA consortiums, teams of hundreds of scientists given the task of processing the mountains of data collected during the mission. He acts as a sort of intellectual leader. He is the one who understands important things about how various different parts of the machine work, and when there is a technical problem, the solution he comes to will, generally speaking, be the right one. He will come to it first, and then he will explain it to everyone who needs to understand it in this you know, very precise, very clear way. Colleagues say he brings the same rigor to teaching. He's careful. Uh, he's mathematical, and he likes to solve mathematical problems, I think, and I think he is intrigued by designing, working out how instruments work, like Hipparchus, like Gaia. He applies the same care and methodology to his teaching as well. I've had the, the luck to interact with him over teaching matters. I believe he is a much liked teacher. Bath, England. Amongst the hedgerows and Georgian architectural bling, Dr. Michael Perryman and his wife, Julia, take a stroll around the 18th century city. Winning the Shaw Prize was a welcome reward after years of effort. We've been together for a long time, so I was there right from the beginning when he became project scientist for Hipparchos at 26, which is amazing to think of now. Um, so yes, I mean, it's, it's something he's very passionate about, and therefore I'm interested in it for that point of view, but it is an incredibly interesting subject anyways. Perryman first heard about the Hipparchos mission as a Cambridge postgrad at the European Space Agency. What he heard intrigued him, even though stars weren't really his thing. I was quite ignorant about stars, but from the work that had been done already, I could see how important this mission was. Uh, there the weren't queues of people lining up to do this. I think astrometry was perceived then to be a fairly uh, arcane and not a particularly exciting field. What captivated me was the beauty of the instrumental principles, the mathematical elegance of the whole principles underlying this, the measurement of star positions. At the age of 26, Perryman became the project scientist of the Hipparchos Space Telescope mission. Well, I think Michael started with a very strong mathematical background, uh, which he had and he, he used when he did his uh, PhD in the radio astronomy group in, in Cambridge. Uh, on radio astronomy and cosmology. Somebody there must have recognized that Michael had abilities in mathematical comprehension which would allow him to see the, to see the, the, the mission with an overview and see the, uh, the, the, the elements of that mission which would need to be built in order to uh, get it to operate and, and produce the results. We're measuring how the stars are moving through the galaxy. We're determining how the Hipparchos team produced data on an unprecedented 120,000 stars. But Perryman and Lindegren knew ESA could do better, and another space telescope mission was launched, building on the successes of Hipparchos. That mission was the Global Astrometric Interferometer for Astrophysics, or GAIA, a larger, more complex space telescope 
wielding newer, more powerful technologies, but still following in the footsteps of Hipparchos. We didn't have to concern ourselves with so much with the principles. Uh, would this work in principle? Um, we could focus instead on the uh, technological complexities of building this massively superior beast. The main mirror of Hipparchos is about 30 centimeters in, in diameter. The main mirror of Gaia is one and a half meters in diameter. A, a big difference is that with Hipparchos we could essentially only observe one star at a time, but for Gaia we can observe thousands of stars at the same time because they are simultaneously recorded on these detectors. So that means that Gaia is vastly more efficient than Hipparchos was, just in terms of how it is using the available time. To date, the Gaia mission has mapped roughly two billion stars and counting, a massive collection of data that is still being released. The last release was on June 13, 2022. The data have already helped NASA navigate its new horizon spacecraft beyond Pluto. It could help predict future Earth-destroying asteroid impacts. The list of discoveries and uses goes on and on and it will have implications for many things outside of the field that we would have called classical astrometry. It embeds itself in fundamental physics in, in so many different ways, many of the ways we've not even thought about yet. And we'll, some, of the, some of the papers coming out are the most amazing things that you never would have thought would have come out, the crystallization of the cores of, of white dwarfs into huge diamonds and you know things like this. Gaia keeps collecting observations and sends ever more data back to continue studying and to make more discoveries. We can build up the picture of how galaxies form, how, how they evolve and what they and why they look like they do now. Gaia is going to measure its own uh, population of planets and my own predictions there uh, and, and others is that we should be able to detect perhaps 30,000, 50,000 planets with Gaia. So compare that with the present census of 5,000. What is so interesting about these uh, planetary systems is that they're going to be things that are more like our own solar system than things that have been discovered up until now. That is so exciting because it will signal some of these systems which are going to be perhaps like the Earth. Perhaps they're going to harbor Earth-like planets in, in, in orbit around them.